Well, welcome to our community, Susie Thomas, with you this morning. So happy to welcome Sarah Heckert from Gigi's Playhouse. Good morning. Good morning, Susie. Some people might be new to Gigi's Playhouse, Sarah, so tell us a little bit about what it is. Absolutely. Uh, Gigi's Playhouse is a network of Down Syndrome Achievement Centers that span all across the United States, and we even have a location in Mexico. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So when you look up Gigi's Playhouse online, I noticed that you really have to say where <laughs> where you're from. So um, the centers are under one umbrella, but operated locally, yes? Absolutely. That's correct. Yeah, we have 43 Playhouses currently as of today. And then there's one opening here in Canton on April 28th, and we will be uh, Playhouse number 44. So second Playhouse in Ohio. Cleveland came uh, about three years ago. And so we're um, loving to join the Gigi's family here in Ohio and the greater network across the country. There already is a Canton when you do the dial. There you go. They've got it in there. Yes, we're here. What does it look like when we go to a Playhouse? Sure. Gigi's Playhouse is, well, first of all, it's right up the road here from the station mm-hmm. um, nice. here in the Belden Village area uh, in Canton, so right near the highway. So we're expecting folks to come from across the region, not just Canton by any means. Um, all are welcome. You don't have to have Down syndrome or a family member with Down syndrome. You can stop in any time. But we are designed to support the needs of um, families that maybe have a prenatal diagnosis of Down syndrome um, and then to serve their families throughout the lifetime. So we have programming that is free Um, for all ages. So again, that prenatal family um, looking for information and education and support, we are there. And then, um, you know, when your child is born age zero to two, we start programming Mm. and it goes all the way up through adults. It sounds like um, it's such a fun environment. It is. Describe what takes place inside. Our our logo alone has nine colors in it. So (laughs) there you you go. From a branding and marketing perspective, (laughs) um, we are colorful and Mm -hmm. you walk in the door and the walls are purple and green and blue and so is there a reason is there an educational purpose for that um just to have a positive experience Mm -hmm. and it's fun Uh, you know when when moms get that diagnosis whether it's prenatal or at birth sometimes it's a death sentence it's Mm. a life sentence and you know we're here to just uh, part of our mission statement is to change the way the world views down syndrome so we do that through educational um you know outreach and through a purposeful programs to help our kids and adults become the best that that they can be to become their best of all and that looks different for each one just Mm -hmm. like it does for you and i what uh, activities do we see taking place inside? So you're going to see therapeutic-based programs, educational-based programs, and fun. You know, we're going to have fun. We even, like I said, woven through everything. But um, so they're going to, you're going to see toddlers on the floor learning to crawl and walk and jump, and um, you know, increasing that balance and stability. You're going to say the th- same things with adults. The fitness is really important. You're going to see them learning how um, to read and do math with our one-on-one literacy and math tutoring programs, socialization cooking, culinary lessons, um, you know, you name it. And and we will build uh, what our community needs. So if the teens come to us and say, we need a Friday night hangout, we're going to create that Mm. for them. Mm -hmm. What we're finding, I think, with Downs is uh, a far less emphasis on disability and way more emphasis on ability. Amen. Are we finding more and more things that people with Down syndrome are capable of doing? Absolutely. And I think, again, starting at that young age, that early intervention, um, whatever they can get um, you know, invested into them, you're going to see it come out um, full, full fold on the other side. We're also seeing a, a longer lifespan, are we not? Correct. Absolutely. I, um, you know, my, one of my teammates has the, the statistics off the top of his head, but yeah, much longer. My, my aunt had Down syndrome and she lived, mm-hmm. she lived a nice full life until she was um, 55. But, um, you know, today they're, they're exceeding that quite mm. a bit. Yeah. Amazing. So what does that mean for a workforce? Exactly. It means, just in general, the disability workforce is a tremendous workforce to have a mm-hmm. part of a staff. Um, they have very low call off rates, very low turnover rates. Um, morale is typically boosted uh, when that when that individual is present. So, um, yeah, they're out there. They're available. There's organizations here locally that can help you find someone with a disability to join your workforce if indeed that is something um, you're looking at. Tell me about the families that you get to work with. I've oh never known a family who hasn't said <laughs> The, like you say, when I got the diagnosis, didn't know how to react. But our family has been blessed beyond measure by having this new addition. Indeed. Um, 
Yeah. And it's it's fun for me as a mom of a, a child with Down syndrome that is adopted mm-hmm. to learn about all the other stories of the parents and how they found out and how they process. And it's been really educational for me as the board president to simply learn uh, how can we just be there and be supportive. So part of our efforts um you know, we have those new diagnosis baskets, we call them celebration baskets, in all the hospitals. So the, the labor and delivery staff know, hey, if you get um, an unexpected diagnosis, go grab that basket. And in it is fun stuff from us, you know, educational stuff, but also fun stuff. Um, Gigi swag, of course. And then a letter <laughs> from us and from our board that just says, welcome to the tribe. We're here for you when you're mm-hmm. ready. Well, let's talk about that. The, yeah. A family, let's walk them yeah. through someone who's just getting that diagnosis. Yeah. So they get the diagnosis and they do find out that there is support available. What does that look like as far as you're coming alongside a family with help? Yeah, I we first we just want to continue to get the word out there about Gigi's that we are here and we are willing to welcome those people because they are still very very much given that encouragement at every turn to terminate the pregnancy yeah that's what that's all they hear yeah so we just want to keep getting that word out there tell your OBGYN tell your gynecologist tell tell your family doctor that just um, you know this is out there and just so just so our name is continues to be out there so that we can just encourage um, again, and encourage those families. So um, they can call us. They can stop by. Now that we have our brick and mortar, we would love for them to stop by. We have a family outreach coordinator that can meet with them, um, can provide, again, that information, that new diagnosis basket, and just encouragement. And just mm-hmm. I think a lot of the moms and dads I've heard um, when they had that baby unexpectedly, they just wanted to see maybe a toddler or a school ager um, a little bit older to just see that, it was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be that place that people can come sit on our bright orange couch inside the front door and just look at our kids just doing all the things that all the other toddlers do and having fun and tearing up the place like they do and um, and just see that it's going to be okay. I know of examples where children are in mainstream classrooms and excelling. Yeah, my three-year-old is very typical. (laughs) Isn't that just so cool? Well, the other thing that just absolutely breaks the stereotype is – um, as you say, parents encouraged to terminate a pregnancy every step of the turn when they've gotten the diagnosis of uh, just an extra chromosome. Um, you made a choice, deliberately chose a child and said, we want you to two, two <laughs> children with Downs saying we want our family we are not complete without you. Mm, yeah. Tell me about that process because you are not the norm. Correct. But there are people like you who, when they say, who's going to want this baby? Well, you're, look at this line of people. Yeah. There's a rather large club, <laughs> right. and you're a member of that club. Tell me about yeah. your life, Sarah. <laughs> How much time do we have? I know. <laughs> not that. Not enough. Not nearly enough. But, um, but there, tell us There is. Process. There's a national organization that, that helps link um, birth parents looking to place their child with Down syndrome for adoption with um, parents that would love to adopt a child with Down syndrome of all ages. So um, lots of infants, of course, go through that organization. But there are, you know, as uh, parents age and children age and maybe needs become greater or uh, parental needs become greater, um, that they're not able to continue to care for their child. So yeah, there's a whole registry of families across the country looking to welcome a child in. What would stop someone from doing that? I'm thinking um, if you're married and have a family and get that diagnosis, then ending the pregnancy could be done in secret. Giving birth and placing your child would be more public. Is that what might stop someone from placing? A from child? placing a child, <laughs> because my goodness, why carry? If they're feeling guilty because they're placing their child, they're in their minds giving up a child, then how is that not better because you're giving life to your child? Right. How would denying that child a life be a better choice? That's rhetorical. Mm, I know. I know. (laughs) I mean... I mean, you know, the statistics are out there. They're on social media of Mm -hmm. that termination rate is pretty darn high with Mm -hmm. our kids. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think even good, well-meaning parents, they just the fear of the unknown, the fear of a a negative stereotype um, and and just a a fear of a lot of fear is my is my guess. You know, Mm -hmm. I haven't been in those shoes. And um, and some people find out um, before 
the actual birth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most of the time, you're, yes. you're finding would, out ahead of time. I would say, well, you know, we don't know. You mm-hmm. know? That's right. Yeah, we don't That's know. That's right. So, yeah, but I think those that, um, you know, that, that find out early in the pregnancy um, and choose to make an adoption plan, I like to think and hope and trust that they're doing it because they want the best for their child. That's the case in our daughter's birth parents. They are amazing people. They are um, wonderful, and they want the absolute best for her, and mm-hmm. they feel like they have they have gone that path. Mm-hmm. Tell me about you. What process did you and your husband go through saying, this is what we want our family to be? <laughs> um, you know, even before we started dating, I just... Um, I encouraged my husband. I I just said, you know, I think adoption is part of God's plan for my life. And, you mm-hmm. know, I don't think he's going to bring me into a relationship, especially marriage with someone that, you know, is not open to that calling as well. So, so you had this conversation while you were dating. <laughs> Before we dated, I'm, like, I'm not going to even get started unless we know, you know, we could Over be on an the ice same cream pre- soda. Yeah. <laughs> that is pretty heavy conversation. Yeah. So, of course, obviously, he was um, open to God's leading in that area. And here we are, yes. Um, smack dab in the middle of our second um, Down syndrome adoption. This time we're going international to China. Wow. <laughs> wow. So how old will your children be? You have... 11 days apart. Oh, my goodness. Two three-year-olds. So, yeah, pray for us. Well, I will. <laughs> Just, you know, in any case, two three-year-olds uh-huh. is going to be some kind of a challenge. Yeah, I think they're going to, yeah, double down is going to bring the house down. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. And then what kind of support do you have with your family? Uh, our families, our extended family is, of course, absolutely wonderful and supportive and, you know, loving on those kids. They just, I think, sit around and wait for our text for babysitters so they can get their hands on. Well, grandparents do. Yeah, I can get their hands on the that. kids. And, um, yeah, cheerleaders 100% of the way. Mm. Yeah. What kinds of things surprise you about your children? Now, are they both in your home right now? Not or yet. Not so, yet. You're still yeah, number, uh, number two our, coming from China. Yeah, it'll be our child. Our fourth child, but um, yes, she's coming from China this summer sometime. So, how do your children surprise you? Well, so far the yeah. one, yes. and I'm sure more surprises to come. Yeah. But how does how are you surprised by yes. Ava? Is yes. three, and my husband and I look at each other every day and just think she is so much more smart than we give her credit for. Even I mean, we of course think she's awesome and smart, but we think she's even smarter than what we can see and know. She's um, and she's fun, and she's funny, and she understands humor, and she's just a fun three-year-old to be around. She mm-hmm. brings joy to everyone she meets, and she waves at everyone, and she smiles. And, um, you know, we're downtown Canton doing some paperwork for the adoption, and she's talking to homeless people and waving at them, and they just smile and wave back at her. And um, she is just an absolute conduit of joy in, in our lives, and anyone that's ever met her, I'm sure, will attest to the same thing. And she attends Gigi's Playhouse? She absolutely will. I mean, she's drugged there every day now while we prepare. <laughs> she plays with the empty boxes that Mommy's unloading of all the wonderful mm-hmm. things folks are donating. Um, but, yeah, she will definitely be a full-time participant. And let's re- let's review ages for Gigi's Playhouse. Who is this for? It is for those um, families that have a prenatal diagnosis and are just unsure of what is going on and don't know where to turn. We are here for you. It is for... Um, 30-year-old Nick Doyle, shout out, there you go, bud, Mm. Um, and his mom, who is, you know, in a different phase of life than myself, but a wonderful family that can offer support to both younger children, but also still need support in their current phase of life and the things that they're facing. So So pre-born through adult. Absolutely. And Mm. retirees, like folks with Down syndrome that are slowing down, Mm -hmm. come on in, hang Mm -hmm. out. Yeah, Hang out, stuff to do. Someone will be there and it'll be fun. Yeah, absolutely. We've got to take a short break, but visiting with Sarah Heckert from Gigi's Playhouse, we've got some exciting news coming up. After these words, you're listening to Our Community.